For our next area of study in Algebra 2, we're going to be looking at families of functions. And this theme is going to be repeated in almost every single unit that we have from here to the end of our studies. In families of functions, we're going to be looking at different transformations that can happen to a function and other functions like it. So let's begin with some vocabulary. What exactly is a transformation? Well, one way of putting it is that a transformation is an alteration of a basic shape or graph that does share characteristics with a parent function. The main function that we begin with is called the parent function, and everything that results from different transformations are considered the family of that parent function. You could consider them daughter or son functions if you'd like, but we talk about them in general as the family of functions and the parent. So what different transformations can happen? A lot of these are similar to those that you learned in geometry. First is a translation, and a translation is simply a vertical or horizontal movement of an object. So if you take something and move it three feet to the right in a room, that is a translation, a horizontal one. If you take a, an item on a graph and move it two units up, that is a vertical translation. Next is reflection. And a reflection can be defined as a flip of an object or graph across a given line. In geometry, we used a lot of different places to reflect across. In algebra, when we're doing graphing, we typically reflect across just one of two lines, either the x-axis or the y-axis. Uh, we don't typically take other options. Next, a stretch or compression, and this is a change of the magnitude of the rise and fall of an object from a center line. So as we work on our families of functions, all these transformations can come individually or together. So let's take a look at each one separately and then see what we can do with them. First we're going to be looking at translations. If we start out with a basic function and the functions that are being shown here are ones that we haven't quite learned yet but will be coming up this year. The first here is called a sine wave. If we accept this to be the basic system of a sine wave and we want to move it up, what we do is we add a value outside of our function on x. So we do whatever we're going to do to x and then we're going to add a value to it. So if I take x and I'm multiplying it by 2, that's my function. If I then want to raise it three items after that, I would multiply by 2, that's my f of x, and then I would add 3 to the end. If I want to move it down on the graph, then I simply subtract. This is an effect that happens after we've done our main function, so it comes outside of the parentheses. However, if we want to have a horizontal translation, our x value has to compensate for this horizontal shift. So if we want to move to the right, if we want to move this parabola to here, we're moving it to the right h units, so we need to go f of the quantity x minus h. Let's say we pick a value of h. h minus h is 0, so it would make it behave the same as if we had been right here. If I want to move to the left, then that's a negative h, and since it was x minus h, we would have x minus a negative h, which is the same as x plus h. Now this is a concept that sometimes is difficult to understand, so whenever I see a grouping with x, I always just ask what does it take to make inside of this group zero, and that lets me know which way I need to move. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a basic function and we're going to do a transformation or a, sorry, specifically a translation of that function. So let's pick a function to begin with. So we're going to begin with the function f of x equals x squared, which is a shape known as a parabola, which has a basic design similar to this, and this is just a quick rough sketch. Now what I want to do is take my function f and I want to have it centered at this location with the idea that each square on the, or each 
line on this graph is worth one unit. So what has happened to it? Well, in order to move from this starting location to this final location, we had a horizontal movement of three units. So that's three to the right. And we had a vertical movement of a negative two units. So that is two down. And everything else about our function is going to remain the same. So before I went in this pattern to build my graph, and I'm going to have the same thing happening again. So I'm just going to drop my parabola roughly like this. What would my new function look like? Well, if I call my new function g, so I'm going g of x, this is going to be f of my x value. But what happened to it? Well, I moved right 3, so I'm going to go minus 3 and down 2, so minus 2. So g of x is equal to f of x minus 3 minus 2. And that gives me my transformations that I need for a vertical and horizontal translation set. Because 1 happens directly to x, it is inside the parentheses. 1 is happening to the resultant y, and that happens outside the parentheses. Let's take a look at our next one. Next, we are going to be looking at reflections and stretches or compression. So let's start with the reflection. If I have this function here, f of x, and I want to reflect it into quadrant 2, well, the only differences between my function and its reflection is that the reflection will have all the same y values but it will have the opposite x values. So what we would end up with is a function that looks something like this. I missed a point. There we are. And what we have is we kept our exact same function. We just made all the x's the opposite of what they were. So if you want to reflect across the y-axis, you simply have f of the opposite of x. Now if I wanted to put this function down in quadrant 4, I would end up with a series of points as such. And all my x values stayed the same. So I'm taking f of x, but all my results came out the opposite. So I have the opposite of f of x. So if you want to reflect across the x-axis, it's the opposite of f of x. If you want to reflect across the y-axis, it's the f of the opposite of x. Next up is our stretches or compressions. And a lot of times I'll refer to this simply a vertical stretch, and we can have different values for that. So let's start again with a sine wave here. Our parent function is this f of x. It's the blue line working through here. Now if I want to make things taller, I have a value a, and if a, or the magnitude of a, is greater than 1, that is a stretch. So what I end up with is the same sine wave, just a lot taller. If we're going off of everything having a unit of 1, as we're seen, shown here, this would be 3 f of x. However, if I want something to be a little bit smaller, what I would do is if I take the magnitude of a and place it between 0 and 1, this is a compression. And what it does, it says that after I've done my function, I'm going to then limit its height and I get this much more gentle rise and fall of my function. So if a is greater than 1, it's a stretch. If it's le between 0 and 1, it is a compression. And the reason I place the absolute value is because that's really what we're looking at. We can have a negative out here, 
So we could say the opposite of uh, a times f of x. And that's where we start getting to our next concept of com combining these ideas or composition. I have this stretch factor and then a reflection. So let's take a look at what a function like that would be. Here, we're given a description. The graph of g of x is the graph of f of x stretched vertically by a factor of 2, moved right 5 units, and down 3 units. Write the function rule for g of x. So g of x, as it is described here, simply is the function f of x with some stuff happening to it. So let's take these and we're going to use them in the order of operations. So we have a, a vertical stretch. We have a movement to the right and a movement down. Well, because right and left is part of what happens to x, it's inside the parentheses we begin there. We are moving right 5 units. So to move right 5, remember it's whatever it takes to make inside of here 0. A positive 5 would make this, zero, this grouping 0. So we go with a minus 5. Next, we would have a vertical stretch, and that's by a factor of 2. So we have 2 times f of x minus 5. And then we're moving down 3. Down is the last thing that we do, so we have a minus 3 out here. So we can combine these ideas to get different things happening, and this is what we've been doing as we've worked through our basic functions, because the first graph we learned was y equals x. So if I say y equals 2x minus 3, that's simply saying that f of x is x, so g of x is 2 times f of x, and then we're subtracting 3 from that. So there's lots of different ways we can be looking at this, and we have some practice. Now we're just making it formal.